Back before Super Mario Bros. Wonder was released, I discussed some possible unlockable characters that could be added to the game. I thought that Rosalina didn't even need to be discussed too thoroughly as it was almost a given that she would show up in some capacity due to her being playable in Super Mario 3D World. Mainline Mario does not add playable characters willy-nilly, and I saw Rosalina's inclusion in this game as a sign that she would become Mario's go-to unlockable character. I was then proven wrong when Rosalina was absent from Super Mario Bros. Wonder, leaving only two princesses, Peach and Daisy. Daisy being playable was a big deal on its own in Wonder since it's her first appearance in a mainline Mario game since Super Mario Land where she looked like this. So why is it that Daisy got a spot in Super Mario Bros. Wonder but Rosalina was left on the sidelines? The answer lies in how this strange and mysterious character has been used in the Mario series since her debut in Super Mario Galaxy. Let's take a look at the history of Rosalina and see if we can answer the question of whether or not she will be playable again in mainline Mario. Rosalina's first appearance was in Super Mario Galaxy. Besides being playable in 3D World, Galaxy is, to this day, her most prominent role in the franchise. Rosalina is the foundation of Super Mario Galaxy's story and game structure. She introduces the game's main gameplay mechanic, she is the owner of the game's hub world, and she is even who you speak to before you head off to fight the final boss. Rosalina also receives a deep backstory in this game. This backstory, which is told through a storybook, shows us how Rosalina met the Lumas, how she got into space, and even shows us the loss of her mother. This backstory is not something we often see in mainline Mario games, and is not something we have seen in a mainline Mario game since. This sort of characterization helped catapult Rosalina into a more prominent character within the Mario series in the years following Mario Galaxy. It wasn't long before Rosalina would appear in a spin-off title, Mario Kart Wii. Beyond being playable as a racer, Mario Kart Wii's Rainbow Road was heavily themed around Super Mario Galaxy. Then, when Super Mario Galaxy 2 came out, Rosalina got a little demotion. The role of the main guide of the game was taken by this dude, Lubba the Big Purple Star. And unfortunately, we don't get to hear his tragic backstory. My theory, he was in prison. So, why don't you tell me in the comments why you think Lubba went to prison and how he got out. Rosalina does appear in Mario Galaxy 2 in two capacities. If you fail a level enough time, she will show up as a weird ethereal deity and show you how to beat the level before politely telling you to get good. She appears again after defeating Bowser and delivers some of the game's final lines before taking back her star and stealing Mario's hat. She also introduces the green star quest after the player grabs all 120 normal power stars, and if you manage to get every single star in the game, she will just chill out on the ship. Her presence in Galaxy 2 still keeps her around as an important Mario character, but her more stunted role definitely contributed to her declining use in the Mario series in the years to come. In the Wii U and 3DS era, Rosalina's presence in the Mario series started to pick up again. Now she was a regular in the spin-offs, appearing in Mario Karts, Mario Parties, and Mario Sports games. Then she got her playable spot in 3D World. But one of the highest honors of all that Rosalina achieved was her place in the roster of Super Smash Bros. Rosalina's inclusion in Smash truly should have cemented her as one of Mario's most important characters. Only the best of the best Mario characters get invited to Smash, but even with her presence in Super Smash Bros, as we got to the Switch era, Rosalina appeared less and less. I would say Rosalina really got taken down a peg when she didn't appear in Super Mario Odyssey. Mario even went to the moon in that game and didn't even bother to visit her. Rosalina should have showed up and collected taxes on him. As the rosters of games like Mario Kart and Smash Bros got larger, Rosalina's place in them only seems smaller. She became just another character. The interesting space queen with the deep backstory is now over a decade and a half old, and most of us skip the library entirely when we replay Galaxy. So with all this in mind about Rosalina as a character, let's ask ourselves why she got snubbed from Mario's most recent adventure. There is a clear gameplay reason why Rosalina was included in 3D World but wasn't included in Wonder. While both of these games feature multiple playable characters, 
they each take separate gameplay approaches to these characters. The characters in 3D World all have different stats and some get unique abilities. For example, Luigi jumps higher and Peach does the little floaty thing. Rosalina's ability is the spin jump from Mario Galaxy. While different characters have different abilities, their stats are all balanced so that one character isn't explicitly better or easier than another. While one could argue that Rosalina or Peach are better characters because of their abilities, it wasn't the developer's intent for these characters to make the game easier, rather to have them shake up the gameplay with different play styles. Mario Wonder has most of its characters play exactly the same. Luigi jumps the same height as Mario, and Peach can no longer do her floaty thing. The different abilities come from the equipable badges that can be applied to any character. The only characters who are different in Wonder are Yoshi and Nabbit, and that is not for the purpose of giving them different play styles. Yoshi and Nabbit don't take damage and can't receive power-ups. Yoshi also can do his signature flutter jump. The only difference in these characters comes from Nintendo hiding their difficulty settings behind the character selection, a decision that I still very much disagree with. I still think it would have been better for Mario Wonder to just include a setting that let you not take damage if you wanted the game to be a little easier. Mario Wonder also had no unlockable characters at all. While I understand this decision, since a new character would be nothing more than a cosmetic change, unlockable characters are just about one of the best rewards you can give a player in a game, and to not include them is a missed opportunity. And lastly, Mario Wonder has just about no post-game. Unlike 3D World's multiple secret worlds that give you a good unique chance to use Rosalina, Mario Wonder has one secret world with one level unlocked from each world and some final challenge levels. Not much of a post-game at all. Rosalina just doesn't fit into this gameplay structure. Her ethereal and mysterious nature almost requires her to be an unlockable character. And by being an unlockable character, players would expect some kind of special ability, which with Wonder's difficulty structure would cause Rosalina to become another easy mode character. Story-wise, it doesn't make sense to add her in either. What would the queen of all the stars care about some flower kingdom getting taken over? She's probably got better things to do. Makes sense that Daisy came along for the ride instead. I doubt she had other plans. So what does this all tell us about the future inclusion of Rosalina in mainline Mario? Since Rosalina was snubbed from Super Mario Bros. Wonder due to gameplay and story reasons, rather than an attempt to phase her out of the franchise, it seems possible that she could turn up in a future Mario game that could use her. If we get another Galaxy installment, I could certainly see her being a part of that game, hopefully in a better capacity than Super Mario Galaxy 2. And even if there was an Odyssey 2, I could see her showing up to finally collect that moon tax. And there is also the possibility of a Mario Wonder DLC pack of sorts. Mario Wonder does lack a lot of post-game content, and perhaps Nintendo did that intentionally to add some DLC in the future. Or maybe she can even be a part of Peach's series. Princess Peach Showtime could be the start of something brand new, and possibly a sequel to that game could feature four players at once with Peach, Daisy, Rosalina, and Pauline. Rosalina is one of the newest major characters in the Mario series. Characters like Mario, Luigi, Peach, and even Wario have had nearly twice as much time to develop. She's still finding her place within the series, and I think while Mario Wonder is a big blow to her popularity as a character, it is by no means the end for the Mother of Stars. Hey, if you like this video on Rosalina, maybe you'd want to check out this other video on Princess Peach Showtime's villain, Madame Grape, or check out this other video about a crazy Mario Party challenge I came up with. If you like what I do and want to see me do more of it, consider becoming a channel member or checking out my Patreon, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.